All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Matt, and today we're diving into something I don't nearly talk enough about, the Polish Armed Forces. And let me tell you, Poland are not messing around when it comes to beefing up their military. They're really throwing down a lot of cash, cranking out a lot of homegrown firepower, and making sure no one really dares test their defenses. And I have massive respect for Poland. They are bolstering their defenses like no other, and for very good reason. And I think we can all understand as to why that reason is there. And right in the middle of all this military flexing, we've got a beast of an infantry fighting vehicle that I can only describe as kind of a Bradley IFV on steroids, or maybe the Ford Bronco of Bradley's. Either way, it looks like it's been hitting the gym and ready to throw down. But this isn't just about looks, this thing is built for battle. Not only that, it's amphibious, very modernized in its style and its technology. And while I'm a little surprised they went with the 30mm Bushmaster autocannon, it's still providing itself a very serious contender on the battlefield. And a vehicle I actually knew nothing about. I did not know what Poland's infantry fighting vehicle was, which is why I actually had to research it. So let's break this bad boy down and kind of see what it makes it tick. But before we do, let me know what your favorite tracked infantry fighting vehicle of the world is. As you all know, mine is a CV-90 and very close second is the Warrior. But this actually might be my third place. I, I don't know. I, I think more for the fact that I love the fact that Poland has produced it and I think they've really pushed everything into this platform. I, I heavily respect that. And unlike other countries that have a larger defense budget or defense culture than Poland does, um, I think this is a very bold vehicle and a very bold mood for them, which is why I think it is going to come into my third place. But let me know in the comments section what your favorite vehicle is. So let's get into this. Now, it's pretty obvious that Poland's military modernization has been in motion for years, but the need for a new infantry fighting vehicle became very urgent as regional threats escalated. The Borsuk, which translates to Badger, is Poland's answer to the outdated Soviet-era BWP-1s. The Polish armed forces needed a modern IFV that could match NATO standards, which would improve protection, firepower, and mobility, all while maintaining an amphibious capability, something that most European IFVs lack. And this is why I think this vehicle is quite interesting. Those big old chutes at the back there pumping out water actually give this ability to do quite a lot in the water. And I was kind of shocked at the size of this vehicle. But when you look at boats, they're absolutely massive. They still float. And that's kind of what this thing is. It almost is a boat-sized IFV. The project officially began in 2014, led by Huta Stalowa Wola, or HSW, under Polish Armaments Group, alongside a consortium of defense companies. Funding came from Poland's National Center for Research and Development, ensuring the vehicle would be fully domestic in its design rather than foreign adaptation, which is a big deal for me. I love countries that can produce their own equipment, and I have massive respect for that. By 2017, a prototype was revealed at the MSPO Defense Exhibition, marking a milestone in Poland's independent military manufacturing capabilities. Testing ramped up between 2018 and 2023, with the vehicle undergoing live fire trials, mobility tests, and amphibious exercises, as you can see here, to ensure battlefield readiness. In 2023, the Polish government signed a 1400 vehicle procurement deal, marking one of the largest IFV orders in modern history. That is a massive fleet of IFVs, folks. And let's be clear here, it's not just the IFV variant. There's a multitude of different variants, which we'll talk about shortly, but that is a huge order. And of course, they want these vehicles quickly. Production of the Borsok expected to start in 2024 and is expected to finish in roughly 2027, replacing the BWP-1 across Polish mechanized brigades. With NATO standard features, cutting edge weaponry and adaptability for different roles, Borsok really positions Poland as quite a serious defense industry player, particularly for IFVs. The geopolitical situation in Eastern Europe has only reinforced the necessity for this vehicle and for Poland. The Borsuk is not just a replacement, it's a bit of a step into the complete future for their IFV fleet, aligning Poland's armed forces with Western military doctrine while ensuring self-reliance in its own production. With full-scale production imminent, the Borsuk IFV represents Poland's commitment to its national defense and, of course, modern warfare. Keeping up with the times, there is such a massive market for IFVs right now. I really do feel this is a very strong contender in the many, many different configurations that exist out there. 
The Borsox hull is constructed using advanced composite armor, offering ballistic protection against small arms fire, shell fragments, and anti-tank threats like RPGs and IEDs. The front of the vehicle meets Stanag 4569 Level 4 protection, capable of withstanding 14.5mm armor piercing rounds, while the sides provide Level 3 protection against 7.62mm rounds. Of course, though, additional modular armor can be installed to enhance survivability based on mission requirements, meaning they're just going to pack a bunch of modular armor on there. As I know many of you are screaming in the comments right now saying, Matt, 14.5mm armor piercing rounds to the front is nothing. Well, yes, most vehicles that are not up armored cannot withstand more than about that in infantry fighting variant configurations, particularly in an armored piercing configuration. So calm down, it can have extra protection added on there. For crew and passenger safety, the Borsuk is fitted with a modern spore liner, reducing the risk of fragmentation injuries in case of penetration. It also features an advanced CBRN filtration system, ensuring protection against chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear threats. Unlike its BWP-1 predecessor, which was highly vulnerable to modern anti-tank weapons, the Borsuk integrates its own active protection system designed to detect and intercept incoming threats before impact. Additionally, eight 81mm smoke grenade launchers provide rapid concealment, allowing the vehicle to evade laser-guided munitions and enemy fire, and can actually be directed in an automatic configuration, allowing the commander to focus on other things. The driver's compartment is positioned on the front left with thick vision blocks providing enhanced battlefield awareness, and the troop compartment can accommodate six dismounted soldiers with a rear ram for quick entry exit under combat conditions. Overall, though, its armor and survivability are under significant upgrade over previous Polish IFVs, ensuring that troops are much better protected, more mobile, and more deployable on the battlefield. The Borsak IFV is not just about protection, it packs quite a serious punch, and at the heart of its firepower is the ZSSW-30 Remote Controlled Turret, a Polish design system that makes the vehicle a formidable force on the battlefield. 30mm is a round I can get behind, I use it in Afghanistan with the Warrior, it is a formidable platform, particularly with the Bushmaster setup that they are using in this configuration. Now, lots of people debate me on what's the best caliber to have as an autocannon for an IFV, and as I've said in many times on my channel, anything above 30mm, in my opinion, is the way to go. Yes, I know many of you are going to say, but that 25mm did so well against the T90, and I know so many of you in the comments are also going to be saying, the T90 wasn't taken out by the Bushmaster and the Bradley. Look, I'm saying at modern day standards, 30mm and above is the way to go. Personally, I would actually select 35mm, but this is a formidable gun and something that certainly should be feared if you are going against other infantry fighting vehicles or armored personnel carriers in this configuration. It is mounted alongside the coaxial 7.62 UKM 2000C machine gun, providing additional firepower against infantry and light vehicles. This secondary weapon allows for sustained suppressive fire, giving supporting troops the ability to advance under cover, and with 6,000 rounds stored inside, it has a lot of ammo to push down range. For anti-armor engagements, the vehicle is equipped with dual spike LR anti-tank guided missiles, which are very renowned from the Israeli defense market. Spike is my favorite long-range anti-tank missile. There's been some debate about how effective it is, but in terms of features and what this thing can do, I'd say this is a very smart selection for an anti-tank guided missile for a vehicle of this kind. These fire and forget missiles developed by Israel's Rafael Advanced Defense Systems can engage main battle tanks and fortified enemy positions with pinpoint accuracy. Mounted on the turret's right side, they provide long-range lethality, allowing it to engage threats beyond direct line of sight and have top-down attack engagements and Technically, the missile can also be used for reconnaissance because it has a camera that is monitoring the area before it engages and can actually select its targets. It's a very complicated missile. Go check out my video that I've done on it in the past. The ZSSW-30 turret is fully stabilized, allowing the gunner to fire on the move without losing accuracy. Unlike my favorite warrior, it features independent targeting systems for both gunner and commander, meaning they can simultaneously track and engage multiple targets, which is a crucial advantage in high-intensity combat. Of course, we call this hunter-killer capability. Gunner's doing one thing, commander is looking for another. To further enhance battlefield survivability, it integrates the OBRA-3 laser warning system, alerting the crew when they are being targeted by enemy laser weapons and being beam rided. Paired with the smoke grenade launchers, the vehicle can very quickly deploy a defensive screen and break enemy lock-on, reducing the chance of being hit by potential ATGMs or even drones. 
In short though, it's not just a troop carrier, it can be doing quite a lot of work in the assault configuration with those anti-tank missiles and that 30mm gun. And I really do respect the fact that the turret system is autonomous. It is not crewing up with people inside of there, causing issues for if it gets engaged. The vehicle can go in a bit of a hold down position and do its own damage from long distance. And what's interesting about this vehicle is it's picking some of the best technology and equipment to put into this thing. The vehicle is powered by the renowned MTU 8V199 TE20 turbo diesel engine, producing an impressive 720 horsepower. That's a lot of juice for a vehicle of this kind. This powertrain allows the Borsok to reach speeds of 65 kilometers off-road and 8 kilometers an hour in water, maintaining strategic mobility in varied environments. Designed for harsh terrains and adverse weather conditions, it features six double-tired road wheels per side with a front-mounted drive sprocket and rear idler. Its composite rubber track system supplied by Susi Defense reduces vibration and noise while also cutting down on weight compared to steel tracks. It's recently uh, I was checking out some of the comments that you guys had and you said that somewhere in there that I did not like rubber tracks. That is a complete farce. I actually love rubber tracks. I do think they have their weaknesses, but in terms of modern IFV fleets, Rubber tracks make sense. I'm personally a favorite fan of steel tracks because I think they have better survivability in certain cases, but when you're talking about 1400 vehicles, you want something that you can quickly get into the battle. Uh, yes, rubber tracks are a lot better, but the vehicle can come with steel tracks too, as you can see. This gives it a smooth ride and enhanced its crew comfort during long range operations. And being that I've been a crew commander, driver and operator of Warrior, I can safely say that you do not want to be rolling for long periods of time on metal track. It is horrible. When I was in the CV90 on their rubber track systems, so much nicer. It's just more comfortable. To ensure that effective amphibious capability, the Borsuk is equipped with two very powerful rear-mounted water jets, not like propellers. Allowing it to traverse rivers, lakes with additional preparation, it could even potentially deploy in the sea. With a deployable breakwater at the front of the hull, it improves stability in choppy waters, making the vehicle highly maneuverable in amphibious operations. Its low ground pressure and high suspension travel allow the Borsok to navigate mud, snow and rough terrain more effectively than some of the older IFVs. Whether it's in urban battlefield or an open countryside engagement, the Borsok is built for rapid and sustained movement, and Poland's emphasis on mobility and amphibious capability ensures that it can support fast-moving mechanized infantry units, giving the Polish forces a bit of a tactical advantage in both offensive and defensive operations. Beyond its firepower and mobility, the IFV has quite a lot of technological involvement in there. It's a powerhouse really, actually packed with a lot of modern battlefield systems that enhance its combat effectiveness. One of those standout features I had mentioned is that hunter-killer and killer-killer targeting systems. In hunter-killer mode, the commander identifies the target with a panoramic sight on top and designates it for the gunner who then automatically aligns the turret and engages. In killer-killer mode, both commander and gunner can engage separate targets simultaneously, significantly increasing the vehicle's combat efficiency. In theory, you could fire the spike into a one vehicle and the gunner engaging with a 30mm in the other. Whether or not that's effective or not is yet to be known. I mean, killer killer mode using an ATGM and the main gun at the same time would be rather impressive to see. The turret's bi axially stabilized observation devices allow for precise target tracking even when the vehicle is moving at very high speeds off road. A wide angle periscope provides emergency observation, ensuring that the crew maintains situational awareness in all conditions. It also has a Orba 3 laser radiation detection system, as I had mentioned, but it does have the ability to have cameras placed on there too, to have situational awareness for the crew in the back and for the driver when he's hull down with his hatch closed, because there's nothing worse than driving just using vision blocks. I used to do it and I hated it, particularly in gross conditions or at night, when you have systems that can use cameras and night vision it's going to make things so much easier for the crew to operate at night or in horrible conditions or smoke even. Communication is another strong point for the Borsuk, featuring the Fonet Digital Internal Communication System. This system provides seamless voice and data transmission, ensuring that the crew remains fully connected to one another in the vehicle and to Battlefield Command and Allied Forces in the area. 
And I know all of you hate me saying this word, but it is a modular, I'll say it again to really upset you guys, modular chassis. It's serious, every comment section I go to, someone gets upset that I talk about platforms that are modular. It's just, that's the way things are. Militaries want modular chassis to allow it to serve multiple roles beyond that of just the standard infantry fighting vehicle. And the Polish military has planned several specialized variants, including flexibility for different battlefield scenarios. Like most IFV fleets, it does have a command post vehicle equipped with advanced communication and battle management systems, allowing commanders to coordinate large-scale operations for the front lines, which of course with 1400 of these vehicles going into potential operations, you need a very good command and control system. It also has an armor recovery vehicle designed for obviously vehicle repairs and recovery, a medical evacuation vehicle with casualty evacuation providing rapid medical aid and carrying up to four stretchers in the back. There's also a 120mm mortar carrier, the RAK M120G, armed with a self-propelled mortar system allowing for high volume indirect fire support to frontline troops. Yes, we're kind of looking at the Amos style vehicle from the CV-90 standing, and this is something I'm actually going to do a separate video on in the future because I'm kind of intrigued as a gunner as to what this mortar carrier will be. There's also a reconnaissance variant, which is fitted with enhanced sensors and surveillance systems and better sites for longer range scouting and intelligence gathering, including drone control. And finally, a mine diffuser vehicle designed to clear hostile train of explosive threats, ensuring safe passage for allied forces. So let's summarize Poland's next generation infantry fighting vehicle. To be honest, it's really designed for modern warfare and that emphasis on protection, firepower and particularly mobility is key here. Poland continues a huge amount of modernization. I think this is one of the tip of the spears of that modernization, a very formidable IFV that I feel a little embarrassed that I didn't know enough about sooner. Um, it is quite new, which is of course why I've probably not seen as much in the context of the defense world, but military analysts are getting quite excited about this platform. I personally am because I do feel it's taking the best of all sorts of different technology and pumping into one vehicle. That powerful 30mm cannon, the Spike LR anti-tank missiles, amphibious systems inside of there, a good MTU engine. It's a big deal, folks. The Borsuk, I think, is certainly a contender against some of the even more prominent Western IFVs. Of course, it's not as technologically advanced as, say, the Lynx or, you know, even the Puma, but it's adaptable through its multiple variants ensures that I think Poland has an armed forces with a very versatile and prepared IFV for a lot of different combat scenarios. As serial production ramps up, this vehicle will become the backbone, really, of Poland's military strategy, reinforcing NATO's commitments while strengthening national defense and giving the infantry a solid platform, if it comes to it, to go to battle in. So, as always, I love reading the comments through my videos, and trust me, I read a lot of them. I try my best to read all of them, but it's hard to keep up. But I'd love to hear your input on this vehicle. If I got anything wrong, please correct me. Of course, I do make mistakes in some of my research, and I appreciate you all making those corrections. It helps educate me better. I am certainly not a subject matter expert in every military vehicle around the world. So, you as my community have been doing great and giving me corrections and modifying videos for the future, so thank you for doing so. Also, a massive thank you for those who have been sending super chats recently in the comments to some of my videos i really appreciate that gratification and and uh, i guess uh you know awarding work that i've done it means a lot to me and if you have been supporting me financially on patreon and paypal thank you also for doing that uh, if you're new to the channel click subscribe join us on this journey as we look through further military equipment of the future and if you're already subscribed it's actually quite a good idea to click that bell button i know these are all cringy cliche horrible youtuber comments but the algorithm's a struggle for me right now, folks, I won't lie to you. Um, so if you could do anything in your power to hit the like button or just give me a comment, it really, really means a lot to me on a personal level. So thank you all so much for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the Borsuk IFE. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye.